lives sweating bullets after Supreme Court just handed Trump the best news of his entire presidency. Winning, winning and more winning. Late last night President Trump won yet another legal battle against the American left wing and their bought and paid for activist judges and lackeys. As expected, the United States Supreme Court on Tuesday night dismissed one of two cases over the president's ban on visitors from majority Muslim nations. The court dismissed the case that originated in Maryland and involved a ban that has now expired and been replaced by a new version. But sadly the justices failed to take action on a separate case from Hawaii which was originated by Obama friend and lackey, Hawaii Attorney General Doug Chin, who has been battling President Donald Trump over travel bans since February. The one-page order states that the justices were unanimous in deciding against ruling in the Maryland case, although of course one of the liberal Barry Soetor justices, Sonia Sotomayor, did note that she would not have wiped out the appeals court ruling in its entirety. The expired travel ban had included people from terrorist hotbeds such as Iran, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, and Sudan. The new open-ended ban, scheduled to take effect on October 18, removed Sudan from the list while blocking people from Chad and North Korea and certain government officials from Venezuela from entering the United States. Because we are all aware how dangerous starving people from North Korea and Venezuela are, but that's what you have to do to satisfy the liberal mindset. Wonder why they didn't add Ireland to the mix, I hear those Irish are really dangerous to our nation's security. The New American reports. Trump travel ban unconstitutional. But Obama, Bush, Carter travel bans constitutional. Other presidents have suspended immigration without having their orders derailed by the courts. Why is Trump's executive order being treated differently? On Thursday, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals kept to its activist ways by refusing to allow President Trump's executive order suspending the controversial U.S. refugee program to be in effect as it continues to wind its way through the courts. The three-judge panel that denied the administration's request to lift the temporary restraining order on the executive order was unanimous in its decision. The judges, William Canby Jr., a Jimmy Carter appointee, Richard Clifton, a George W. Bush appointee, and Michelle Friedland, a Barack Obama appointee, wrote in their decision that the executive order likely violates what due process requires such as notice and a hearing prior to restricting an individual's ability to travel. The decision also says that it is the government's burden to make a strong showing that, it, is likely to prevail against the state's procedural due process claims and that the court is not persuaded that the government has carried its burden for a staying appeal. In plain English, that means that the three-judge panel decided that the restraining order against Trump's executive order is unlikely to be overturned by a higher court. So it sees no reason to lift the restraining order as this case works its way through the labyrinth of legal red tape it faces. Of course, the point that is largely overlooked in all of this is that each of these judges was appointed by presidents who also had policies restricting an individual's ability to travel. Let's just spend a few minutes unpacking that as we work our way backward through the timeline. As the New American reported in a previous article. In 2015. Obama signed H.R. 158, the Visa Waiver Program Improvement and Terrorist Travel Prevention Act of 2015. That bill clarified the grounds for ineligibility for travel to the United States regarding terrorism risk, to expand the criteria by which a country may be removed from the Visa Waiver Program, to require the Secretary of Homeland Security to submit a report on strengthening the electronic system for travel authorization to better secure the international borders of the United States and prevent terrorists and instruments of terrorism from entering the United States, and for other purposes. The Huffington Post reported at the time of that bill's passage. In what could be a sign the administration is moving away from a policy seen as discriminatory. The Obama administration announced Thursday that it is restricting visa-free travel to the U.S. for recent visitors to three additional countries, but not for dual nationals with those passports. Under the new restrictions, citizens of the 38 countries that are part of the reciprocal visa waiver program will lose their visa-free travel status if they have traveled to Libya, Somalia or Yemen within the past five years. 
Thursday's announcement is an expansion of a law passed late last year, which revoked the visa waiver status of people who had recently traveled to Iraq, Syria, Iran or Sudan, and who hold dual citizenship with any of those four countries. Interestingly, not only did the liberal mainstream media celebrate those restrictions, as the example from the Huffington Post shows, but there were no legal challenges brought against H.R. 158, either. Also, to put in the for what it's worth column, that bill, signed into law by Obama and allowed to stand without being issued a restraining order, is one part of the legal framework on which President Trump's executive order rests. Before that, though, in 2011, Obama's State Department quietly halted all refugees from Iraq for a period of six months after it was discovered, to the surprise of no one paying attention, that terrorists who had actually fought against U.S. soldiers in Iraq had gained entry in the United States as refugees and were planning attacks here. It seemed that reason dictated a more stringent vetting process. Now where has this writer heard that recently? Going a little further back, in 2002, in the wake of 9-11, both houses of Congress unanimously passed, and President Bush signed, H.R. 3525, the Enhanced Border Security and Visa Entry Reform Act. This legislation restricted travel to the United States from countries that are state sponsors of international terrorism and created a vetting process so extreme that any vetting process Trump comes up with would have difficulty appearing anything but moderate by comparison. Of course, it was reasonable then and it is reasonable now. But to those looking to attack Trump's policy on this issue so critical to national security, reason is a stranger. Evidence of that can be seen in the fact that 73 Democrats who voted to pass that law in 2002 are still sitting in office and are among those decrying the supposed evils of Trump's executive order which rests as much on the legal framework of H.R. 3525 as it does on Obama's H.R. 158. H.R. 3525 is still on the books and in effect granting the president the authority to stop the issuance of non-immigrant visas from the very countries Trump's executive order names. And as Conservative Review noted, Trump merely applied that law in conjunction with his authority under the Immigration and Nationality Act, Section 212F, which grants the president plenary power to by proclamation, and for such period as he shall deem necessary suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants. The next stop on our trip in the way back machine is to April 7, 1980. America was in the midst of the Iranian hostage crisis. Five months into the 444-day-long ordeal, President Carter responded by issuing a series of proclamations under his executive authority. Here, in his own words, is the one that is germane to this issue. Fourth, the Secretary of Treasury, State, and the Attorney General will invalidate all visas issued to Iranian citizens for future entry into the United States, effective today. We will not reissue visas, nor will we issue new visas, except for compelling and proven humanitarian reasons or where the national interest of our own country requires. This directive will be interpreted very strictly. Now, here, in the present, three judges, appointed by presidents who not only did essentially the same thing Trump is doing, but laid the legal foundation and set the precedent for his actions, have the nerve to pretend that while it was fine and dandy when their presidents did it, it is somehow unconstitutional when Trump does it. And there's the rub. Constitutionality is not a matter of who, or which party, holds the office and issues the directives, it is a matter of what the Constitution allows and requires. In this case, Article 4. Sec. 4 of that Constitution seems apropos. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this Union a Republican form of government, and shall protect each of them against invasion, and on application of the legislature, or of the executive, when the legislature cannot be convened, against domestic violence. President Trump's executive order is a balanced attempt to secure the borders of this nation against a terrorist invasion under the guise of a refugee program. The alternative is an open-door policy that allowed Iraqi terrorists to enter this country in the wake of 9-11. President Obama blocked those refugees then and if his actions lacked prudence it was that they did not go far enough. The salient point, though, 
is that no one accused him of overstepping his constitutional boundaries in taking the action he did. Or Bush before him. Or Carter before him. Why is this any different? It's really starting to look like no matter how hard the left tries they just can't seem to get a leg up on President Trump. This particular case makes it even harder for them to win when you see how former President Barack Hussein Obama did the exact same thing. But with him it was okay because he's black and has an Islamic name, let's not kid ourselves here. Thank you for watching this video. What do you think about this? Share this on Facebook and Twitter along with your comments. Comments.